Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. In the remote, icy expanse of northern Siberia, a derelict military compound sat forgotten by time and obscured by the relentless snowstorms that swept through the region. Known only to a few as Camp Nocturne, this site was once the center of a covert Soviet experiment known as Project Morpheus. Officially, it was to be a study on the effects of prolonged sleep deprivation using an experimental gas that suppressed the human need for sleep. Unofficially, it delved into the manipulation of human consciousness and the breaking points of the mind. In the spring of 1954, five political prisoners were chosen as subjects. They were promised freedom if they could remain awake for 30 days under the influence of the experimental gas. The chamber where they were held was equipped with reinforced glass for observation, microphones to capture their communications, and a supply system to pump in the sleep-suppressing gas. Cameras were set up to document every moment, feeding live footage to a secured monitoring room where the scientists could observe the results. The first few days passed without incident. The subjects behaved as expected, showing signs of alertness far beyond the normal capabilities. However, as the days progressed, the effects of sleep deprivation began to manifest in unexpected ways. The subjects started to exhibit extreme paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began whispering to the microphones and cameras, voicing suspicions that they were being tricked and that their fellow subjects were plotting to undermine their chances of freedom. By the 10th day, their behavior took a turn for the worse. They started exhibiting severe psychological disturbances, including hallucinations and delirium. They tore the books provided for their entertainment to shreds, pasting the pages with their own feces on the plexiglass windows as a form of opaque privacy screen to obscure the scientists' view. The scientists, intrigued and disturbed by the development, debated stopping the experiment, but their curiosity drove them to continue. This decision proved catastrophic. On the 15th day, screaming was heard in the chamber. When the scientists restored visibility, they discovered that one of the subjects was dead, mutilated by the others, who had fashioned makeshift weapons from the debris of their living quarters. The remaining subjects were no longer speaking. Instead, they produced animalistic grunts and were observed tearing apart the remaining furnishings and even gnawing on their own limbs, seemingly impervious to pain. Blood and cryptic messages smeared the walls, their meanings indecipherable and their implications sinister. As the scientists struggled to regain control of the situation, a severe blizzard cut off all access to Camp Nocturne, isolating the team and their subjects from the outside world. Communications failed, leaving the facility in eerie silence, disconnected from any command or rescue. In the sealed observation room, the scientists watched in horror as the subjects turned completely on each other and themselves, driven by a madness that the sleep deprivation had unleashed or perhaps merely unlocked from deeper within the human psyche. The gas seemed not only to inhibit sleep, but to amplify the darkest parts of the human mind. Now, with no way to stop the experiment and their ethics abandoned, the scientists documented everything, hoping to salvage something from this descent into madness. But as the subjects dwindled, succumbing to their self-inflicted brutalities, the power supply flickered and alarms started blaring, signaling a breach in the chamber's integrity. The experimental gas began to leak into the observation room. The scientists scrambled, desperate to seal off the chamber and protect themselves, but it was too late. As the gas filled their lungs, the last barriers of their professional detachment and sanity began to erode. The horror of the experiment turned inward, their minds beginning to fracture under the weight of what they had done and what they were about to experience firsthand. As the boundaries between observer and subject blurred, the true nightmare of Project Morpheus was only just beginning. Trapped inside the observation room as the experimental gas seeped through the vents, the scientists began to experience the horrifying effects that had driven their subjects into madness. Their vision blurred, heart rates escalated, and a profound sense of dread settled over them as they faced the inevitability of their fate. The air thickened, filled with the faint, metallic taste of the gas, that had maintained their subjects' wakefulness and descent into insanity. Dr. Antonov, the lead scientist of the project, tried to maintain some semblance of control. He attempted to document their symptoms, his shaky handwriting barely legible in the project log. 
But as hours passed, his coherent thoughts unraveled, giving way to ramblings and sketches that mirrored the chaos around him. The room felt smaller, the walls seemingly closing in, mimicking the confinement that the subjects had endured. Paranoia took root among the team. Dr. Yelena Svetlova accused her colleagues of plotting to leave her behind should a rescue team arrive. She barricaded herself in a corner of the room, clutching a scalpel she'd taken from their medical kit. Her eyes darted around wildly, and she muttered to herself about shadows moving in the corners of her vision. Dr. Kirill, another member of the team, became obsessed with the idea that the experiment was a test of their own endurance and sanity, not just the subjects. He claimed to hear a voice through the static of their non-functioning radio, instructing him on how to end the game. He dismantled electronic devices, searching for hidden messages he believed were left for them. Outside, the blizzard raged on, the howling wind and driving snow creating a complete sensory isolation from the world beyond Camp Nocturne. The isolation deepened their despair, the scientists' minds bending and twisting under the influence of the gas and the relentless environment. As the experiment's 30-day mark approached, the endpoint that had been set for their subjects, the remaining scientists were mere shadows of their former selves. Their environment deteriorated around them, the facility falling into disrepair as much from their neglect as from the encroaching forces of nature. Dr. Antonov, clinging to the last threads of his professional duty, set up a camera to record their final days. The footage was erratic, filled with long stretches of static, interrupted by brief glimpses of the scientists in various states of distress. The audio was worse, a cacophony of screams, sobs, and incoherent babbling that would haunt any future viewers. In a moment of lucidity, Dr. Antonov turned the camera on himself. His face was gaunt, his eyes hollow and haunted. If this is found, let it be known that Project Morpheus was a failure, not of science, but of humanity. We sought to explore the human mind's resilience, but found only its fragility. This is our legacy, he said, his voice a broken whisper. Uh, With the camera still running, he turned it back towards the observation window of the chamber. The interior was visible now, bathed in the eerie light of several emergency lanterns they had set up. Inside, the last of the subjects lay motionless, while shadows danced along the walls, as if the spirits of those lost were restless, perhaps emboldened by the scientists' own approaching demise. As the record light blinked steadily, Dr. Antonov wrote one last entry in the logbook, his handwriting barely comprehensible. We are not researchers, but subjects, subjected to our own horrors, trapped in the experiment of our own design. His pen slipped from his fingers, clattering onto the floor as he slumped back, succumbing to the same darkness that had claimed so many before him. In the frozen silence that followed, only the storm's cry and the faint hum of the failing life support systems filled the air, a grim chorus for the closing act of Camp Nocturne's tragic symphony. The story of the Siberia sleep experiment continued, a chilling testament to human curiosity and its potentially horrific consequences. As the hum of the life support systems dwindled to a haunting silence, the oppressive darkness of the Siberian winter night reclaimed Camp Nocturne. The scientists, now completely succumbed to the experimental gas's effects, were indistinguishable from the subjects they had once observed so clinically. The boundaries of observer and participant had dissolved entirely. Their roles reversed and then merged into a shared nightmare. In the silent observation room, Dr. Antonov's final words echoed through the minds of the remaining team members as if his voice had become part of the building's structure. The camera, its battery nearly depleted, captured the last flickers of movement. Dr. Svetlova, her mind lost to paranoia, spoke softly to the shadow she believed surrounded her, negotiating her safety in exchange for secrets she no longer possessed. Dr. Kirill, detached from reality, continued his futile attempt to decode messages from the disassembled radio parts strewn about him, convinced that salvation lay within the tangled wires and broken circuits. His whispers merged with the low moans of the other scientists, creating a dissonant symphony that was punctuated occasionally by the sound of the wind beating against the facility. Outside, the blizzard intensified, the snow and wind conspiring to erase the sins of Camp Nocturne. The facility, already isolated by geography and secrecy, was slowly being buried under the relentless Siberian snow, which blanketed the compound in a thick, suffocating layer. Inside, the cold was relentless, creeping into the bones of the living and the dead alike, 
As the last of the camera's battery drained, the screen filled with static before fading to black. The recording ended, leaving behind a digital record of human tragedy that might never be discovered. In the observation room, the cold finally claimed the last whispers of life, the scientists' bodies growing as still as the subjects they had watched over. Months later, when the storm had passed and the skies cleared, a recovery team dispatched by the Soviet military arrived to investigate the silence that had followed the experiment. They found Camp Nocturne entombed in ice, its interior a frozen tableau of horror. The bodies of the scientists and subjects were almost perfectly preserved by the cold, their faces etched with the terror of their final moments. The team collected all the evidence, the recordings, documents, and remaining physical traces of Project Morpheus. The decision was made swiftly at the highest levels. Camp Nocturne, and all it contained, would be buried forever beneath the Siberian Earth, a tomb to contain the nightmares it had birthed. The official record stated that the experiment had never concluded, its outcomes inconclusive due to an unforeseen tragedy. Deep beneath the snow and ice, the dark legacy of the Siberia sleep experiment lay hidden, its truths sealed away in the frozen ground. But the land remembered, as did the few who survived the initial recovery mission. Whispers of the horrors at Camp Nocturne lingered, morphing into legends told in hushed tones across the tundra. The site became a spectral landmark, haunted not just by the souls of those who had died there, but by the chilling reminder of what happens when human curiosity delves too deeply into realms best left unexplored. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video.